Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have an early impression, late night insight, quick hit video, whatever you want to call it, on a house that I've been kind of infatuated with. I've been wanting to get to know their stable of offerings and it's tough because they came out, I want to say somewhere between 22 and 25 years ago. I don't know exactly how long the house has been in business, but um, I know they were around at least 22 years ago. The house is Ajmal. Now, Ajmal is a house that I have been up until this these last couple months, really, these last two or three months, I've been ignorant of the house. Uh, and I knew about them, but I didn't really know about them, if that makes sense. Uh, I heard Russian Adam, who I trust greatly, uh, one of my uh, best friends in the industry, uh, well, one of the only friends that I have who's actually in the industry, but uh, he made a video within the last year or two basically saying Ajmal is his favorite house and, and he laid out the reasons why. Uh, you can go watch that video on the Arij Ladore YouTube channel. Uh, but what ended up happening is, is I kind of kept all that in the back of my head and I had a perfume god person uh, who has been a great friend of the channel. He doesn't want to be uh, outed by name or anything like that. So we keep his identity hidden. He keeps his mask on. Um, and he actually said, hey man, I'm trying to make some room. You know, uh, I've got this bottle and I just willing to let it go for a song, make me an offer and, and I'll probably say yes. And so I said, okay, you know, it's one I've been interested in. And it was uh, Muhalat al-Shams. And uh, I got this, I, I literally did get this for a song. He's just trying to make room, and um, I got it in. I sprayed it on. It was my very first Ajmal experience, and I was like, wow, this is, for the price, maybe one of the best oud-centric fragrances I've ever purchased because it was literally peanuts uh, for what it's worth. I think it's worth five times what I paid easily. And um, so long story short is that kind of opened my eyes and I was like, wow, this is very good because I know that uh, they um, have their own oud plantation that uh, Ajmal owns. And um, so I knew they were using real oud in their, in their compositions. Uh, and this is kind of like this ambery oud musk fragrance, if you will. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Took me, um, I would say you could even, if you, if you were somebody who, you know, maybe you're used to wearing Western fragrances, you've heard a lot about Oud, and the only thing you've smelled is like Tom Ford's Oud Wood or something, and you're, and you're ready to take it past that Norlimbanol, you know, s stage of Oud, and you want to go to something that smells like real barnyard Oud, but you don't want to go spend a lot of money on Frederick Mall's The Night, or, you know, Bortnikoff's or that kind of stuff, go buy this. I mean, this is a great introduction to what Oud is. You could buy this, you could buy Fakhat Little Rajal, which sounds like a curse word, but it's actually, uh, it means, I think, for men only, uh, and I think that's a Rasasi fragrance. You can get that for 20, 30 bucks. Uh, this might be a little bit more expensive, but uh, you can find this at discounters for 65 75 bucks or less i would guess um and this is a uh, 50 mil so it looks like a really big bottle but it's a 50 mil i really like this presentation uh, i like some of their bottles i mean you can see the detail it's a very unique design and uh, really highlights the um you know really highlights the brand and what they are all about so that is the first kind of just introduction to the house that I had. And then Russian Adam reached out to me and said, hey, man, because I was asking him, what are your favorites? Because I'm going to kind of keep my eyes out. He said, I found this. It was super cheap on eBay. I just bought it and sent it to you because it's one of my favorite from the house is this and, and one other is my favorite. And what he ended up sending me was this. And this is Ajmal's uh, 1001 Nights, beautifully named fragrance and beautiful fragrance just in its own right. It's almost like a Middle Eastern take on on an Oriental, you know, I was going to say Shalimar, but, poor, you know, um, just pointing out one Oriental isn't fair because that's not really true. It's just, I would say, an, Ori an Oriental 
um, backbone with this oud and uh, again completely blew me away I smelled it and I went wow and 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 what I learned later on is that um, this has been around since the year 2000 that's how I know they're at least 22 23 years old now it's 2023 I keep forgetting um, and so one thing that Adam mentioned to me is he said that this is a new bottle that I got you. This is a 2020 batch, actually. So it's a couple years old, but newish. And he said that they just keep it in fantastic shape. You know, you don't have to worry about reformulations. Uh, there's spices and smoke and, you know, woods and musk and oud. And the oud smells so real and uh, barnyardy, just like the way I like it. Fecal, animalic. I love that type of oud. Uh, that Indian oud scent profile, if you will. And so that was like, wow, two out of the gate, just stunning fragrances, value for money, out of this world. Uh, and so, okay, I need to dive into this house. And I remembered that I had a perfume god person who wants to remain anonymous, uh, I think. Although I have a hard time keeping track of who sent me what, but I don't think they want to be ousted. Uh, and, and they sent me a couple uh, Ajmal fragrances. There's a playlist on my channel now. You can go click on Ajmal and find the videos, and I did a uh, review recently of a fragrance they call uh, Amber Santal. And I compared Amber Santal to Zadig and Voltaire. This is him, which I have a 100 ml bottle of, and I, I really enjoy that fragrance. Uh, that's a Nathalie Lorsen creation, one of my favorite perfumers, uh, and, and I think she's so underrated. I love her work. And um, I said, you know, I already have a bottle of that. This is nice, and I, and I meant that. But, uh, but it wouldn't move me to go buy a bottle. So, but I wanted to learn more. I wanted to see if that was like a fluke or if we're going to go back to this quality. So there's one other sample I found. I think this is the last one from the house that I have uh, some juice of. And it's called Hot Cora Wood. Hot Cora Wood. And it's an Eau de Parfum uh, from Ajmal. And, you know, uh, I've worn this now. I think this is my third night of kind of spraying it on, not in a row, but just since I've gotten it periodically, I'll just grab it and spray it on before bed. And I think I know the scent well enough to talk about it, but just keep in mind, I'm not, you know, I don't own a bottle. I have not worn it over years or anything like that. This is truly just a quick hit early impression video. So what does hot Cora wood smell like and what does it mean? Well, first of all, interestingly enough, uh, it uh, came out in 2014. So this is one of their newer fragrances, and this is from that same, the bottle looks like the exact same bottle that, uh, that Saint, uh, Ambre Santal that I did the review on previously looked like. So it's from that same line, okay? I think it's more the designerish line. I'm not really 100% sure, but uh, it's classified as like a woody citrusy fragrance. And what's interesting about it is in the top, there's two citrus notes, lemon and Hot Cora Lemon, hence the name, right? And I had to look up what the hell is Hot Cora Lemon. I've never even heard of Hot Cora Lemon before. Uh, and so I looked it up, and it's known as Shot Cora, or Hot Cora Lemon. It's also known as Wild Orange, is what they call it. Uh, and it's a semi-wild species native to South Asia, Malaysia, that area of the world. Uh, and it is... Um, so here's kind of the quick little Wikipedia rundown. It says that, uh, so the uh, scientific name is Citrus Macropetera, and it's so named because of the large wings on the uh, petiole, which is, a lar which is as large as the blade of the leaf. The tree, which has thorns, can reach 5 meters, uh, 16 feet in height, its fruit is about six to seven centimeters in diameter, has a fairly smooth, moderately thick rind, and is yellow when ripe. The pulp of the fruit is greenish yellow and dry, does not produce much juice. The juice is very bitter and somewhat sour. Uh, and it says that in culinary uses, in Bangladesh, for example, the thick fleshy rind of the, we'll call it hot kora lemon, since that's what they call it, uh, is eaten as a vegetable, while the pulp is usually discarded because of its bitter, sour taste. So the exact opposite of what you expect. They're eating uh, the fleshy rind on the outside and throwing away the pulp uh, because the pulp is so bitter and sour. Uh, and 
The thick rind is cut into small pieces and cooked, either green or ripe in beef, mutton, and fresh curry in fish curries. Uh, the rind is often sun-dried for later cooking and consumption. The fruit is also a primary ingredient in uh, hot cora pickles. It is also used in donor kebabs and in British Bangladesh food, fast food restaurant change. Um, and of course it says in the perfume industry in Bangladesh, they exact a high price because of their use in the perfume industry. Here you go. So um, now you know it's a bitter-ish lemon. So what's interesting about this is when you first spray, uh, I don't get bitter. I get sweet, like a lemonade sweet like a sweet lemon, you know, with sugar poured in. I was like, wow. And if you know me, you don't, you know, I don't like really sweet fragrances, but it makes a course correction very quickly because at first spray, I'm like, no, 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 this is not good at all. Uh, but if you give it some time and not a lot of time, actually 30 seconds, a minute, you start to notice that uh, there are two lemon notes in the top here. There's the lemon and there's the hot cora lemon. And so what you'll initially get is that just generic, sweet, designer-like lemon that you smell everywhere, right? And it is uh, very sweet because it has this sweetened, you know, lemonade-like feel when you first spray. But the hot cora lemon kind of comes in and saves the day. Uh, and so what you end up getting is this combination of sweet and sour, okay? And they do play off of each other pretty nice. Um, to be fair, I think this is probably more of a summer fragrance because of its emphasis on citruses. Now, I think most people who look at this name probably have no clue that Hot Cora is a lemon. I have no clue. Um, maybe smoke, Maybe there's a small percentage of people out there that do, but I would guess the majority of people who look at this name have no clue what it means. Um, that it literally means lemon wood. Um, and so we're going to talk about if this actually lives up to the name, if it lives up to lemon wood. Now, one thing you'll notice from the very beginning when you first spray though, is there is this synthetic woods and what I perceive as ISO E super. I think it's ISO E super and a lot of it. And, um, that, which doesn't necessarily make a fragrance bad. I actually just bought a, um, specific version of Terre de Hermes, the Eau de Toilette, but a specific you know, size, because I know that that size is discontinued, which means it's an older batch. And once the bottle comes in, I'll show it to you. It's an ama it's actually an amazing story, so I, I can't wait to share it with you. And that's an ISO E Super Bomb. Terra de Hermes is an ISO E Super Bomb. Uh, and, but it's still, you know, just an amazing fragrance. Um, and even, I think to this day, Jean-Claude Elena says he really can't unravel the mystery that is Terre de Hermes. And he made the damn perfume. So, um, you know, but we'll talk about that for but I, for a different video. But I just wanted to mention that just because something has ISO E Super doesn't mean I'll run in the other direction necessarily. Um, and so, so now that the opening, uh, you get that synthetic ISO E Super, which... You know, if you've smelled it before, you'll kind of know what to expect there in this sweet and sour uh, combination. And it, and it brings in that unique sour feel, to be fair. That hot cora lemon does bring in a unique, um, a unique sour aspect that I can't say I've really smelled in just an out-and-out -out lemon. There's also, um, so there's a couple other things that kind of come into play here, okay? Number one, there's a beautifully executed note of ginger. And ginger does the kind of the same job as what the bitter lemon does. It, it works in conjunction with the bitter lemon and the, the, the sweet lemon. Uh, and they kind of all play in this trio that makes it seem very fresh and sprightly and citrusy. And, you know, citruses make a fragrance to me very welcoming. Um, very easy to just spray this on and put it to your nose. There's not this challenging dry down aspect you have to wait through. I mean, it's just pleasant from the get go. You could spray this on. That's why I think this is kind of more of a spring summer type fragrance. Um, but we'll get to that later. And so um, about 30 minutes in, you start to notice that there is this slight smell of incense, which the incense actually was much more potent in that Ombre Santal video. If you go watch that, I mean, I compared it to an out and out incense fragrance, which was Zadig and Voltaire. This is him. I think that's one of the best value for money incense fragrances money can buy. 
I think Nathalie Lorson did to Incense with Zadig and Voltaire, this is him, what she did to Vetiver in uh, Ancre Noir, you know, just made such a beautiful cheap cheap dollar wise not cheap smelling wise um fragrance that can be enjoyed by anyone i mean she is like the queen of budget fragrances um but getting back to this uh to to this hot hot cora wood fragrance so um the incense makes an appearance and it becomes really noticeable probably 30 to 45 minutes in i would say but it's in the background it's very suppressed it's not a main player you have to kind of really search for it, um, and um, you will notice that uh, there is another background note that kind of hides in the shadows, if you will. The incense is a shadow player. The peach is a shadow player. There is a fruity peach note uh, that kind of contrasts that bitter, citrusy lemon that gives it that sour sweet. Um, so you have ginger and the hot cora lemon kind of more on the, uh, soury side of things. You've got the peach and the sweeter lemon more on the sweet side of things. And so there is a nice contrast to this fragrance, but the fruity peach is in the background. It never takes center stage. Uh, and also another background note to my nose anyways, another background note is saffron. Saffron makes this fragrance have a traditionally Middle Eastern, uh, you know, tint to the fragrance. It, 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 uh, whenever you smell it, it'll feel like you're smelling a Middle Eastern fragrance, which is what, uh, Ajmal wants, obviously, being a Middle Eastern house, being based in Dubai, um, that they, they want you to know you're smelling a Middle Eastern fragrance, obviously, but, um, the saffron is not turned up to a 10 or 11 or anything, uh, it's again in the shadows. And so this fragrance plays this, uh, game of dark and light. You know, there are some notes that kind of hide in the background and they stay there. They never go out of the shadows and into the light. And there are some notes that, you know, just are front and center from the get go, like that lemon, like the ISO E super, the woods, whatever you want to call it. I don't, I don't know what synthetic woods are used. I can't, I'm not a perfumer. Um, so I can't say whether it's amber woods or this wood, fake wood or that fake wood or whatever it is. I, I have no clue what it is. Uh, but to my nose, it just smells like ISO E Super. Um, and, you know, uh, ISO E Super basically has this characteristic about it. If you've ever smelled ISO E Super, it smells remarkably pleasant. Uh, and it has these dry, woody... Uh, aspects to to the smell. Some people say it smells like ambergris. Some people say it smells like vetiver. Some people say it, say it smells like patchouli. Some people say it has this uh, slight uh, phen phenolic nuance. Some people say that it has this cedar wood like smell, this vague, sweet cedar wood. Some people say it has this woody, musky aroma. And to be honest, I get a little bit of everything here. Uh, that's why I think this is a ISO E super bomb. It, it does give off this vibe of, um, you know, it gives off this dry woody smell. And, you know, there is a note of sandalwood listed in the base, which you will get this. In the dry down, you might get kind of a ghost sandalwood, but it's don't think you're going to get some beautiful, creamy sandalwood that's spotlighted. No, it never goes there. Um, there's an ambergris note in the dry down. I don't get it. Usually ambergris is a hard note to pick out anyways, unless it's really framed. Uh, there's a musk note in the dry down. Now, that's a big one. I do get musk. And, and really, after the first hour or so, you could almost characterize this as a floral woody musk if you wanted to, because there is a rose note, there is a lavender note, but again, the lavender plays peekaboo. Sometimes you think maybe you smell it a little bit, and then lots of times it remains in the shadows from the times that I've worn this fragrance. Um, and so, you, woody floral musk would be a fair characterization of the dry down. Um, but the, um, the one facet of ISO E Super that I would say jumped out to my nose the most is that vetiver-like acid, facet, sometimes acid, facet, sometimes it felt like, you know, I was smelling 
a vetiver fragrance and there's no vetiver listed here. So my guess is the ISOE Super is playing tricks on me, uh, which it can do. ISOE Super also has this, um, you know, some people are anosmic to it and I become anosmic to this scent very quickly. I had to ask, you know, my wife one day, hey, can you smell this? Because I can't smell it anymore. And she was like, whoa, absolutely, yeah. So it's kind of one of those things, if, if you're smelling it yourself over and over, you might become nose blind to it. But if other people smell you, and ISOE Super also has this push, this projection that it will give. Um, and, and so if you're somebody who wants people to smell you, but you don't really care about smelling your own fragrance, this may be one to look at. For me, I enjoy smelling myself. Uh, I enjoy the breaking the fragrance down, if you will. I enjoy, um, you know, seeing what happens with the fragrance at hour three versus hour six versus hour eight. You know, I'm like a scientist trying to break the fragrance down. And I can't do that with this because I really do become nose blind. I mean, I sprayed this a couple hours ago and, and I'm kind of like, I don't know. I had to spray this again 30 minutes ago. And, and I can, this one is more prominent, but I'm just like, you know, it kind of does what it does. And then it just, I assume it's still there and I assume people could still smell it, but I'm just kind of in that, uh, I guess I have a hard time picking up that ISOE Super Accord. Now, uh, let me talk a little bit about the Oud note because there is an Oud note listed in the base on Parfumo. I'm going off of Parfumo, okay? Fair or unfair, but that's the site I prefer. And uh, Oud is listed, and I just mentioned that Ajmal has their own oud fields. Don't think you're going to get an oud like this. I mean, you can barely smell the oud. It's not a main player here. It's a shadow player, if at all. Uh, I get more amber woods in Isoe Super with that lemony, you know, shadow-like peach. And uh, like I said, a little bit of saffron to keep it in the Middle Eastern vibe, but that's it. So this is probably my least favorite Ajmal, you know, to, to wrap up. Because uh, these videos are meant to be quick hit videos and here we are 22 minutes in and I'm rambling But um, I this is not my type of scent, you know, especially since I have that uh, Terra Hermes Which is a ISOE super bomb and I'll wear that in the summer coming uh, I always held off buying that Terra Hermes for so long But once I I'll share my uncovery with you guys once it comes because there's a very interesting story to the specific size of Terra Hermes that I purchased um, and when it comes in and you see the bottle you're gonna think I'm off my rocker but again there's a reason uh, so for me this is a pass this is a hey I'm glad to smell it but what I think is happening is I think the house of Ajmal has kind of split up into a couple different um, tranches if you will on one side of the coin they have stuff like this that really highlights the beauty of their real oud and, and they're using the real oud in their fragrances and it's highlighted gorgeous in a gorgeous fashion and it can compete with the best of the best ouds out there uh in my opinion it can uh for not a lot of money you know so value for money on stuff like this is through the roof value for money on their more designerish offerings for me are not through the roof it's kind of much lower and um you know, this is, uh, I think you're going to have to kind of sift through the offerings of Ajmal and find the wheat from the chaff, kind of push aside these more designer-like offerings to get to the stuff like this that I just highlighted, Mukhalad al-Shams and Thousand and One Nights. And they also have one called Din al-Shams that I want to try that looks like it's in a similar bottle to Mukhalad al-Shams. Uh, and the only note listed on Din al-Shams is Oud. Uh, so I'm very interested in trying that, but, uh, for the most part, I think these like designer like offerings where this is, this reminds me of like a pay the, this is like, we got to pay the bills as a house, right? That's what this reminds me of. Hey, we have to pay the bills. Uh, it's, it's a fragrance that will probably sell to the younger crowd. It has that, you know, it has that, uh, synthetic, uh, it has that synthetic smell that the younger men, I think, would go for. For me, this is a pass. Uh, this is a no-no. Uh, I wouldn't buy this. I probably wouldn't wear it much, even if I did. But even if someone gave me a bottle, I wouldn't wear it much. Uh, so this is one of those where this is a perfect example of what these quick hit videos are meant to be. You know, me talking about a fragrance on the channel that 
otherwise would never get any talk. I'll never talk about this again, most likely, but I wanted to put my thoughts out there. So if you have experience with the House of Ajmal, let me know in the comments. If you have experience specifically with hot coral wood, let me know. Um, and, you know, I love interacting with you guys. Do leave a like and a subscription if you're not subscribed. It helps the channel, YouTube algorithm, all that stuff I usually don't say. I'm going to try to make it a point to say it more because I think it does matter because uh, we want to attract more people like us who are perfume lovers to the channel. And there's a lot of perfume lovers out there who have no clue we exist. They're stuck watching some of the bigger channels who don't have the same amount of love of perfume that me and, and, and our little fragrance town here has. So um, likes do help. I will say that, although, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't work towards the algorithm. I don't make my videos in a specific way because the algorithm says it'll succeed if I make five minute videos. Um, you know, I, as you can see, I just do my own thing and let the chips fall where they may, but the likes and the subscriptions help. So, uh, appreciate you guys watching. Cheers. Everyone have a great night and hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye now.